Hello everyone, in today's video, I'm going to show a comfy UI workflow that I created recently for e-commerce product images. This is going to enhance a lot of e-commerce product pages, whether you have any kind of products, and make them more lifestyle images. For example, I posted in the Patreon group where I demonstrated some vitamin bottle products put into lifestyle backgrounds, blending the product itself into these background environments. It's not just copy and paste of the product onto the background, but we also regenerate a new background using Flux, and we're going to have the backgrounds generated with the products blending in and adjust those colors using Comfy UI. We're able to produce fine tuning styles like that. A lot of problems in generating using AI is that, for example, on this product page, we see that a lot of products are using white backgrounds or some kind of boring image that's not going to attract people much when they first see it. What we're going to do is enhance the product listing, whether you have your own Shopify or Amazon listing. If you create your own product brand, you'll be able to make it more outstanding in the crowd with your own custom made product image. This workflow was inspired by a previous image out paint workflow that I did. It was starting from this image. We had this wedding cake and I expanded that image to a Christmas style theme with a living room. This one used to be that small dimension size in the middle, the sofa and the TV, and I expanded it way larger. That's almost like a 180 degree wide shot photo of a living room. This is the inspiration from the out paint to create this workflow for product images. The middle of those processing different groups are specifically focused on e-commerce products. So this workflow, first I load it in ComfyUI. As you can see, I have a backpack here, one of my favorite brands, Mystery Ranch, and their listing for Amazon is okay. They use a white background for the first image, but the second, third, and other introductory images should look more interesting. If I act as an e-commerce consultant for their brand, I would make those images better. That way we can do some enhancement for those images. So just as a demo in this video, we're going to try that out, making this backpack, for example. How can we make it more interesting? First of all, we load this image for the initial product image. In this group, we'll be using the segment anything. You can use other segmentation methods as well. And I put another optional method, which is using the InspireNet remove background custom nodes that we've talked about. This remove background custom node is very excellent and able to remove all kinds of details from the background to the foreground objects. So we're going to use that as a second option. For switching options here, I got a switch for image and mask from impact pack custom nodes. We'll be able to select whichever options we're using. For option two, that's going to be the InspireNet remove background option. For option one, we're going to use segment anything to do background or object masking in this area of my product image. Let's try first of all, we can see both results. First, by disabling all other groups in this workflow, we just load this initialized product image group to see the result. That's our first step whenever we load a new image. So we got the first one and also we got the second loading from segment anything. As you can see, there are both results. I've put them on this workflow as well to let you guys have a preview of that before running the other groups of processing and the flux image generations. Let's do a preview here. Each image or product image will act differently. So in this case, if we have a black color backpack like this for segment anything, it can't do too well, even if I use other prompts. For example, just put backpack here and run it again you'll see that it's going to be worse than what we have in segment anything. Sometimes for different colorations as well. And the thresholds, we can just test that with different numbers and see what we can get or test other prompts like bag. It will get even worse. Sometimes you can't identify too much. So let's go back to backpack as the text prompt here. At least that's a little better. But as you can see there, the product image and mask are not getting too good results sometimes using segment anything. That's why we're going to mostly use the background removal for this kind of situation. And especially for e-commerce product images, we use a lot of background removal to just highlight what we want for our product. We're going to choose number two in this switch node, which means we're going to use the 
InspireNet Remove Background. Then we can start enabling other nodes here. So I will enable step two. We're going to enable the Create Image Panel and enable Flux Generate Backgrounds. That's going to be step two that I'm going to produce. So create an image panel, which means we're going to paste our product. For example, we have a black color backpack from Mystery Ranch. We can put that into backgrounds like how I did in this demo. Basically, we can allocate the backgrounds and the product locations on the new image with a set of dimensions. So here as best ratios, we can set the dimensions of the new image we want to generate. And here I've got that already. The second step will be creating using the layer utility. That's what I mentioned previously for layering custom nodes. It's basically a Swiss army knife for fine tuning your image in Comfy UI. So the layer style custom nodes package, remember this name and just search it in Comfy UI manager. It's a very handy tool. You can do very quick edit styles here. So check this out, the Comfy UI layer styles. This custom nodes pack, a very, very great custom nodes pack, allows you to do all kinds of color adjustments and is basically very handy. So we're going to get the color tone of the product image that we've passed in here. Then we set the color panels for the backgrounds in our new aspect ratio dimensions. Then we're going to do an image blend with that new background. Now that's going to be only one color, solid color background in the color panel. Let's run this and you'll see how that goes. As you can see, the new color of the background is based on analysis from these nodes to get the color tone from the product image. Basically, the color tone is going to be like the gray color and that's matched with the product image. And, you know, we got the mask of this new image panel that highlighted the backpack as the mask area. Then we're going to pass all this mask data, the new image panel width and height, all that stuff going to flux, generate image, which is going to be here. Now this is the first pass, I'd say the first generate sampling pass in Flux. We're going to use GGUF, just very typical styles of Flux. We're going to define what's on the background of this new image panel. So we're using a mountain view, landscape photography on a rock in the middle, hardscape and soft ambient light. Then that will be passing to the K sampler for the first image sampling. Now we have to remember this one, we have to use the in-paint models conditioning that is well in the nature of creating these custom nodes. It's useful in in-painting, but when we're setting the image dimensions in other numbers, which is a new image panel size like this one, we'll have another external area for masking in this case. So that means it will become an out-paint effect for the generated image. So right here, we got the backpack already appear on top of the mountain. It's more like a lifelike style of image rather than, you know, in the Amazon website, this kind of demo white color background. I mean, if your product is good for, you know, e-commerce or whatever marketplace that is, you have to make a good image to stand out your product. And that's a very fundamental principle for marketing in e-commerce. Although we need the initial image as a white background for a lot of e-commerce platforms that require that, their requirements because they have to match with their website's white backgrounds, but your alternative or the second image or the other rest of the images should be attractive, so make that more lifelike style. For example, a backpack for hiking or backpacking. Take a photo shot on the mountains like that. That will be more interesting for the audience to check out this product. The next step we're going back here, which the groups we're going to enable the image lighting fine tune. We're going to use the IC light, where I mentioned that before in the previous videos about the comfy UI out paint. And I did that also for matching this style with different lighting using IC light as well. So we're going to enable this in the workflow and also enable the image add the detail to a product. So this is going to be doing on the next step. So let's go to the IC light groups here. We have just basically SD 1.5 models. Well, we have the image new panel of the mask image and also that we pass the image that created by Flux, which we just created in step two. Then we're going to bring it for the IC light conditioning to create better lighting, to blend in more with the mountains and the product itself, rather than different lighting colorations between those two layers. Uh, so let's run this IC light and see how that goes. So again, I'll do a mask to image here and do a remover. We're using the Big Llama remover. This is going to remove the background of the image 
and we'll retain the backpack, which is the product area. Then we do uh, an enhancement that only affects the light source of the image of the backpack in this case. So after that, we'll see that it's kind of in a low dim lighting. That's fine because the IC light is, you know, generated in SD 1.5. It doesn't do too good quality compared with Flux. That's okay. We'll go back to add some details to that now. Most beginners using Comfy UI or those who are not really pros for e-commerce image editing or e-commerce in general will be feeling happy with the first Flux image generations like that. But when we take a closer look, like on Amazon, you have, for example, this kind of image, a guy wearing a backpack on the snowy mountains or backpacks on the rock like this. You see that the images blend in with the products. The light color and some details in between those rocks and the backpacks are kind of blended into one environment. So we try to do similar things in Comfy UI. As you can see, the first generated result is not going to feel like it's blended into one image. It feels like you're copying and pasting that backpack onto the image. A lot of people will stop at this stage when they're using Comfy UI or any AI diffusion model to generate images. They would stop at this moment and think this is good enough for the product image. But we're not satisfied with that. So we'll add details again using Flux image to add details to the product. And then we'll upscale that using the tile upscale, which is here. We send the image to the new Flux Union Pro Control Net. We're using the tile to add the conditioning, and then we use Ultimate SD Upscale with the Flux models to generate better quality. Sharpening that image again and saving that to our product e-commerce image folder. Then let's do this one and run this again. And this time we'll continue the workflow process in the image add detail to product groups. In here, we're using the Flux models, so we'll have the result here. As you can see, this is from the add detail to product groups using Flux. We start to add back those details of the backpack. It blends into the rocks. It kind of sits on the rocks, feels more lifelike rather than copy and paste style. But then, as you can see, the logo is missing. A lot of data is lost in this stage. We're using a lot of sampling diffusions, sampling that will lose those text words and etc. So what we're going to do is we're going to use again the Layer Styles Custom Nodes Pack. We add back the detail transfer to add back the original product image, and we use the Layer Frequency Detail Restore to restore that original product image detail, as well as all the text and the logo text. We match those colors again using the KJ nodes to match those colors. Pass that to Auto Adjust by Layer Styles again. This is a very good Swiss Army Knife package in Comfy UI. Recently, I use that a lot, so pass that again. Till here, we got two images from these groups after adding details, which this one will be the color match output. So after the JK nodes color match, here I set one output for image preview, which of course the color doesn't look too bright. But one good thing is that we can restore the original product image with the logo as well. And some sling on the backpack is able to be restored. We have a very unique special zipper color from Mystery Ranch. And also its company logo is able to be restored as well. Uh, compare with what we have with the too much denoise and too much sampling from the previous image preview. And also the waist strap here is missing some details. It should be a separate sling with some buckles on the waist strap. And there you have it. Then after that, we're using auto adjust using the layer styles custom nodes and we auto adjust those colors and those colors are going to auto adjust by layer color layer styles custom nodes. Here I pass one more for a side by side comparison for the image preview and there we have some light source from the back of the sunrise up and we got some light just coming up from the background and some a little more detailed light on the product itself as well and we have the comparison of both image results in here. As you can see the coloration after auto adjust looks better and the product image itself has restored the logo as well as some details of the products like a backpack like this, a lot of these straps, and the shoulder harness. Some buckles are able to restore those details from the original product image, but then the overall outlook of the image feels like it's blended into the product because we have enhanced those lights and used flux to regenerate those details again, making it look more blended in as one image that it takes from the mountains.
But of course the brightness and contrast can be adjust in the auto adjust custom node. And you have to try it with your setting. So we're gonna wait for the tile control net to upscale. We'll check this out when it's finished. Okay, so after generating in the upscale group, we have those images produced and likely we have larger size images. Basically, you can set the number to multiply how many times it upscales from the original dimensions that we have. For example, I have labeled on here using this float number, set it to two times multiply two times in the upscaler. You can of course do it larger if you want to be very high definition, very large size image to four times or five times as well. It depends how many times you want this to be upscaled. So usually I upscale two times, it will generate 18 amounts of image in the upscale grid. So it's three times six, as you can see right here. So the tiles are upscaled from the tiles control net in here, very similar to what we did in the tile upscales using back then in stable diffusion that I have demonstrated in previous videos using tile upscales and tile diffusions, custom nodes, and this is the same concept as well. But then using the ultimate upscale, we are enabled to add the upscale models into the image generations enable to add more details, uh, sharpening over all of the image. But of course, some images like this one, it is sunset or sunrise from the background. For the icy lip adding the light effect, it will not going to be too bright. It just looks natural, what it naturally does. And that's what it is for this image. And then we have 4x ultra sharp just sharpening over all everything on the final output image before it's saved to our e-commerce product image folder. So that is basically the workflow of using one product image without any backgrounds. And we can enhance that to a lifelike style or a lifestyle image for our product listing on whether you have Amazon, you have your own Shopify stores, you have your own e-commerce website. You can enhance that with just only a simple white background image like that. And that will be it for this video. And some people might think that why don't I just use Photoshop and remove those backgrounds and create a new image for the background. And the result is mostly like the first generated flux image generations. You will have something like this. It's not going to see the products blend into the image. And as you see the rock and the backpack straps, everything feels like not blended in. And there's some unclear or low quality edge between the backpack and the rock as well. So after the enhancement, fine tune it and adding those details, we are able to create more blended in styles of our product with the generated image. That is it for this video, and I hope you understand how that will be producing. I know this is not going to be a lot of people's interest, but it is very handy and helpful for business users. And I received inquiry like this for e-commerce business. So I will see you guys on the next videos and have a nice day. See ya.